Hey guys, David here with Radcast. I was fortunate enough to be successful this fall on an elk hunt. Quickly wanted to show you just a boning video and a little bit of meat grinding video. We do all our uh, butchering here at home. So this stuff has been hanging here in the shop for almost a week. It's been getting down to the uh, high 30s at night and then mid 50s during the day. So we've been keeping it wrapped during the day. I don't have a walk-in cooler, but it's still cool to the touch. It's got a little skin on it from the airflow but it's time to uh, cut it up, grind it up, and make some high mountain seasoning. So we're gonna do like a little fast forward video, but I just wanted to show you the tools and what I do and how I do it, because you can save a lot of money by investing a minimal amount of money into some butchering equipment and doing it yourself. So here we've got my bull elk kind quarter. I made me a little gambrel. I just have the engine hoist. Like I said, during the day we've been wrapping it up, but at night just, uh, letting the cool cool mountain air here keep it cold. So you really do want to pay attention to temperatures. Obviously, if you're getting above 55, 60 during the day and not colder than that at night, you're gonna either need a walk-in cooler of some kind, take it to a cooler, or just cut it up and freeze it. So like I said, we're just shy of a week, but we've been down 38, 36 at night, and then 50s during the day. So this meat average temperature's been in that 40, 44 degrees. We got a couple meat tubs. I'm gonna need a knife sharpener, good cutting board. I've got these Victor Knox knives, absolutely love them. Uh, the boning knife and the fillet knife. And then a vacuum packer and a meat grinder. So you just start with the boning knife, find the hip socket, and then you can see this femur coming up to the knee. So you, I'm just gonna cut a straight line between them and then basically follow that bone all the way around and pull this off. Well, and then we'll take the fillet knife and fillet this dried muscle tissue off the outside that has some of the hair and some of the stuff on. It's a little more tedious, but with a sharp fillet knife, it's almost like filleting a trout. It's pretty easy to do. And you can see the knee. You can see the ball socket, and I've gone down to the bone in between them. Same thing here around the front of the knee. Now once I find that bone in there, I just basically, the bone's in there, I take my knife and go around the bone, pull the bone all the way out of the meat, and then I'll go through, and you can just follow kind of like the sinew veins through the meat and find your different cuts. I'm not a professional, I don't know what all the cuts are called, I just know I like big meat in chunks, saran wrapped and then vacuum sealed. Now the meat's all cut, we have our trimmings in one tote, our steaks in the other. I like to saran wrap all the steaks and then vacuum seal them. I've found that this keeps the meat fresher longer. And then we'll go ahead and grind the other tub.
Here we're grinding the meat with a lem grinder and we're using a food saver vacuum saver to package all this burger. Now it's time for the High Mountain Seasoning Snack Sticks. These are an absolute family favorite. They're simple to do, just follow the instructions. I add a little bit of bacon and cheese and then we stuff it with the meat grinder. All that's left to do now is place it in a smoker or an oven. We chose to use the oven at 180 degrees for several hours until it reached an internal temperature of 155 degrees. Cut up and enjoy. And that was packaging bull elk at home. Now you should be able to go out and try it on your next game animal.